Hello, in this video we're just going to cover the basics of adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. Now we are just going to cover the basics, so we're not going to do things like multiplying by a binomial, such as FOIL, or a binomial times a trinomial. We're just going to touch on uh, how to do the very basics, just to get you started. So the key skills are combining like terms, multiplication of exponents, and the distributive property. Now combine like terms means we have to recognize that there are terms that should be added and subtracted, and there are other terms that you cannot add or subtract, like you cannot add x to y. Multiplication of exponents, you really need to be very familiar with how to multiply quick uh, monomials, like 2x times 3x squared. You need to know how to multiply those using your exponent rules. And lastly, the distributive property is extremely important when multiplying polynomials. Now, the formal name of the distributive property is the distributive property of multiplication over addition or subtraction. So you're going to have a, a, a monomial term and then parentheses and then there'll be some addition or subtraction in the parentheses. So to get us started, let's just do some very, very quick examples here. x times x, and a big mistake people make here is, is it's two of something. x times x, remember your exponent rules, there's actually an exponent of one here. So x times x is x squared. x plus x Again, people confuse these two. x plus x, the actual code here is there is a coefficient of 1 before the x's. So this is actually 2x. This is an example of combining like terms. Now 3y plus y, for some reason students get confused by this, but again, there is an invisible 1, an invisible coefficient of 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 3y plus y is 4y. Let's move over to the right. 3x plus 3y some people will say this is 6 of something, all right? And this is not correct. It's not 6 of anything. These are unlike terms. So 3x plus 3y, you cannot simplify. The answer is 3x plus 3y. There's nothing to be done with that. Those are unlike terms. x squared times x squared, and again, this is not 2 of something. It's going to be, using your exponent rules, you have to add these exponents. It is going to be x to the fourth. Now, here's an example of multiplying two uh, monomials, 4x times 3y. You may say, well, they're unlike terms, but that doesn't matter because we're multiplying. So 4 times 3 is 12, and x times y is xy. The final answer is 12xy. And this last example is, is an example of combining like terms. We have an x squared, and we have another x squared. Now, the coefficient of this second x squared is 1. We also have an x and another x. And again, the coefficient of this x is now negative 1. So just combine the like terms. In pink, 5x squared plus 1x squared, or plus x squared, is going to be a 6x squared. Now in blue, we have 2x minus x. 2x minus x is a plus x. There's no need to write a 1 in front. And that is our final answer. So after those quick examples, now let's start working on some more substantial problems. This first problem is a good example of the distributive property. You don't have to draw the, the loops, but sometimes it's helpful when you're just starting out. We're literally going to multiply 3x by everything in this addition subtraction problem, everything in this trinomial. So 3x times 2x squared is 6x cubed. And again, we need to know how to multiply a, a monomial by a monomial. 3x times 5x is 15x squared. And then lastly, 3x times a negative 1 is a negative 3x. Okay, that's a classic example of the distributive property of multiplication over addition or subtraction. How about this next one? Technically, there is a negative 1 here. So technically, we're actually distributing a negative 1. Teachers call this distribute the negative. When we distribute the negative, we end up with a negative 5y. But what's a negative negative 8? A negative negative 8 is a positive 8, or plus 8. Negative 5y plus 8 is the final answer. Sometimes you'll see parentheses. So for example, here is a binomial plus another binomial. When you look carefully, these parentheses are really serving no purpose. It's just a big addition subtraction problem. So again, we're going to combine like terms. 3x plus 5x is going to be 8x. The other like terms are the plus 2 plus a negative 4. How do you add a negative 4? You just subtract 4. So 2 minus 4 
is a minus 2. Final answer, 8x minus 2. Now here's where you have to be careful with this next problem. Again, it's a binomial and a, another binomial, but we are subtracting, which means we're going to be subtracting everything. We're going to subtract 2y, and we're going to be subtracting a 5. That is the key problem that many students make, uh, many students make this mistake. They forget the minus sign applies to everything in the second binomial. Now, some students like to change that minus sign to a plus sign and then put minus signs in here. And I don't like to do that because it obscures what the original problem was. Uh, what I do like to do is I like to focus my attention on that minus sign. It really is a matter of focus here, not rewriting. So 7y minus 2y is 5y. Whenever I do these problems, I keep focusing on that minus sign. I just keep tapping my pencil on that minus sign. The next like term is going to say negative 3 minus 5 minus a positive 5. So what's negative 3 minus 5? That is a negative 8. And this last problem is going to be another distributive property. But here we've got x's and y's, so we really have to have our exponent rules in shape. 2xy times 5x squared, well 2 times 5 is 10. But xy times x squared, x is going to be to the third, and then there's just going to be a y. xy times x squared is x cubed y. The next term is going to be 2xy uh, times, again, this is a multiplication problem, 2xy times 7xy. This gives us a 14, because 2 times 7 is 14, and xy times xy is going to be an x squared y squared. The last term is going to say 2xy times a negative 4y squared. 2 times negative 4 is a negative 8. And then xy times y squared is an xy cubed. Normally, we keep the letters in alphabetical order. Um, and there really is no hard and fast rule for, for what order. Sometimes we like to have the x's be in descending order. So here's an x cubed, here's an x squared, and here's an x but the y's are in reverse descending order, or I should say ascending order, y, y squared, y cubed. As long as it makes sense, as long as it is in a sort of a pattern. So now we have a, just two more problems. This first problem of the last two is just a combined like terms problem. That's all this is. But there's no pattern. There's no pattern to where these terms are. So when you look carefully, I have an x squared here, and I have another x squared. And this is a negative 7. The negative belongs to the 7x. But then I have a 8x and a minus x. And then lastly, I have, I'll switch colors, I have a minus 3 and a plus 7. So taking it from the top, starting with the x squared, 4x squared minus 7x squared is going to be a negative 3 x squared. Plus 8x minus x is going to be a plus 7x. And then lastly, a negative 3 plus 7 will be a plus 4. This is a classic case of combining like terms. You really have to focus on what your like terms are. And this last problem is a, a, a real problem area because we are subtracting again. So we have this minus sign. I'm going to be subtracting everything in the second binomial. And just for fun, I made everything negative. So every single term in this problem is a negative term, plus we're subtracting, just to make sure you're on your toes. So combining like terms, negative 6x minus negative 8. Well, first off, a minus negative is a plus. So negative 6x plus 8x is a 2x. And then we have a negative 2 minus negative 3. Now, minus negative 3 means plus 3. So negative 2 plus 3 is a plus 1. And that is our final answer. So just, just to recap, when you're doing these problems, you really need to know how to combine like terms, how to multiply your exponents, for example, multiplying monomials, and you also need to have the distributive property down cold. In a future video, we will actually cover uh, skills like FOIL and multiplying 
polynomials by polynomials.